In this video, we're going to look at photoelectron spectroscopy data and interpret it to find electron configurations. Commonly, we're going to call this PES because photoelectron spectroscopy is a lot to say and a lot to write. So in Bohr's model of the atom, where we left off at the end of the atomic theory unit, he found that their electrons are in energy levels that go sort of concentrically out from the nucleus. What we now know is that the quantum mechanical model establishes within those energy levels, sublevels. So the first energy level being so small only has one type of sublevel and that's an S. The second energy level is a little bit larger, so it has the S but also a P sublevel. The third energy level is even larger, so it's got an S and a P and a D sublevel. And once you get to the fourth energy level and above, they have the S and the P and the D sublevels, but also an F sublevel. So when we look at PES data, we're going to be looking at not just what energy level are they on, but what type of sublevel are the electrons in. This is what PES data looks like. It's got an x-axis and a y-axis, so let's look at what those represent. The x-axis says ionization energy. Well, that's the amount of energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. Then if you notice the values, typically an x-axis would start with your lowest value and increase as you move right. This one does the opposite. This starts with our largest value and we get lower and lower as you move to the right. So what that means is the electrons that require the most energy to be removed are your first ones on the chart and the ones that require the least energy to be removed are farthest over to the right. Then if you look at the y-axis, it says this is the relative number of electrons that require this much energy to be removed. So if you look at the height of the peaks, it'll tell you how many electrons needed this much energy to be removed or this much energy. So over on the left, I have a little Bohr model so that we can sort of orient ourselves as to what this data means. If we start at the beginning, we have 347 kilo or sorry megajoules of energy required to remove some electrons. Since that's a high amount of energy, that means that these are probably on the first energy level here because since electrons are negative and the nucleus is positive, these are the most strongly attracted, meaning it's going to take the most energy to get them to leave. So that first energy level only has an S sublevel in it, and that S sublevel can only hold two electrons. So since we've moved past the first energy level and we have higher peaks, that means we've filled this up with one S2, and then our next peak is going to be on the second energy level. It's the same height, so that means it's going to be an S sublevel with two electrons in it. So after 2s, we would go to still on the second energy level, but we'd go over to the p sublevel. So this is going to be 2p. Now this is a much taller peak, and so it's probably going to be 6, because since we've moved up higher and a p sublevel can hold 6, then that would be 2p6. After we've gone to 2p, we're going to go up to the third energy level, same height as before, so that's going to be two electrons on the third energy level, and it would be the s sublevel. This is the same height as this one, so that's a P6, and that's going to be on the third energy level. So we did 3S and now 3P. And then, if you remember, we don't go to the D sublevel yet. Don't go there yet. We go to the fourth energy level and to the S sublevel. So this is going to be 4S, and if you notice, it is much shorter than the other S peak, which means it's going to be only one electron instead of two. So if we were to rewrite this, it would be 1S2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s1. So that would be potassium, because if we hop over here to the periodic table really quick, here's our first energy level, second, third. Here's our fourth energy level. This is our s block, so we would have potassium would be 4s1. So now let's look at a different piece of data and see if we can determine what element gave us this data. So we've got number of electrons, it starts with a big number and goes smaller as we move to the right. So that means these are going to be on our first energy level. It's going to be in an S sublevel and it's the highest peak, so it's going to be 2. This one's going to be second S, 2. And then this peak is half the height of this one. So this is only one electron, still on the second energy level, but this time it's 2P. So the electron the element with the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, if we go to our periodic table, would be boron. Because here's our 1s2, 2s2, here's p1. 
So this one back here would be boron. So let's take a look if we've got two different PES data on one set of axes. So number of electrons goes from larger to smaller. So the one we did first, potassium, is the set of, I guess that's purpley pink peaks. And then they've overlaid another element's PES data on top of it. And it looks really similar. This would be our 1s2. These two little peaks would be our 2s2. And then the two taller peaks would be the 2p6. These would be 3s2. And these are going to be 3p6. So, so far, they're very similar. When we get here to where we go to the 4s energy level, that's where things are a little bit different. Potassium just had one, and that peak is shorter. This one has two electrons, it's a taller peak, which means this ends at 4s2. So that tells us that the purple, sorry, the blue line is going to represent calcium, which has one more electron than potassium. But what you might notice is that all the peaks for calcium are shifted a little bit this way, so they actually require a little bit more energy than potassium. And the reason for that is that potassium, we flip back to the periodic table, has 19 protons and calcium has 20. So there's only 19 positive charges pulling on all the purple electrons, but there are 20 positive charges pulling on all the blue ones. So it's going to take even more energy to remove calcium's electrons since it's got 20 protons pulling in on those. We call that effective nuclear charge and you'll learn more about that later in the year. So you could estimate what would a PES data look like for an element just by knowing that this is going to be the big amount of energy and this is going to be the small amount of energy and this is going to be the number of electrons. So for silicon, if we hop back to our periodic table, silicon has 14 electrons. So if we wanted to plot 14 electrons, the first electrons on the big, let's make our peak here, that's going to be 1s2 little bit higher, we're going to make like a same height peak, that's going to be 2s2. So then we have to go, let's see, probably up to here. That would be our 2p6, right? So that gets us up to 10. And we had to go to 14 electrons, so I've got four more to go. So that means I'm going to go to 3s, I'm going to give it those two. Now I've got two left, so let's see, maybe like that that look like a good height? That would be our 3p. Now, we don't have actual numbers here, but that would be the order. That would be what our PES data might look like for an atom of silicon. So thanks for watching.